I'm very, very conflicted. Um, truly emotionally conflicted going into this weekend. I would say that I am not a person that likes guns, but I am also a person that is about 80% sure I'm about to buy one this weekend. You've been saying this for years, though. I know. I know. I know. I I mean, since I've joined the Burt Show. Yeah. I have really been thinking about it for a very long time. Um, So why am I thinking about it now? And again, here is my stance on guns. If you guys want to get political and you want to like, you know, here it is, is like, I believe in gun ownership. I do believe that there should be more intense background checks. And I don't believe in um, assault rifles. You believe in common sense gun laws. Mm -hmm. That's what they want to call it. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, if you got a gun and you're protecting yourself, I am down. So we moved, Tiffany and I moved our family away from a certain part of town because crime was just starting to work its way into our community, right? We also had some other things going on. Her daughter was going to school super far away, but that and the fact that our community just didn't feel as safe to us. There was a couple of break-ins in our neighborhood. We were like, you know what? Let's get out of here. <laughs> Let's move outside the city a little bit. So we did that. We're about 30 minutes outside of the city now. We're in the burbs, baby. We're in the burbs. And you know what's happening out there? What? Break in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do feel safe in my community here, um, but there have been a few break-ins. Over- you think that's because of the economy and like inflation and maybe this impending recession? I don't care. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, probably has a little yeah. bit to do with it, though. Yeah. I don't care, but maybe. Yeah. Uh, but I don't care. Mm-hmm. Um, the community that I was in before, now I hear has been, we made the right decision. There have been more and more break ins there. And while I do feel safe in our community, the fact of the matter is, I'm getting an email or two, you know, that's just making us a little bit squeamish about the whole thing. And maybe it's truly time to buy a gun. My thought here, though, is. The fear of actually shooting somebody, Mm -hmm. like you can talk yourself into like, well, they're in my house. I'm protecting my family, which I would definitely tell myself. But I think when you shoot somebody and if you kill somebody, what are the mental ramifications of that? And what does that do to like your soul? Like, you Mm -hmm. know, you're protecting your family and you're within your rights. And really, I want to ask this question, like if you were like me. You only bought a gun to protect your home and you got unlucky and somebody broke into your house and you or your husband or your wife had to shoot them. What has been the ramifications of that for you mentally and spiritually? This is so crazy. You're talking about this and bringing this up today because I was thinking about this yesterday. Like the ramifications, because there there was a news story about a man who had a gun on him and was able to shoot um, an active shooter. In right? Indiana, right? Correct. Yeah. And so, you know, and in watching the story and, and reading the details on it, it made me wonder like, okay, yes, this person is, is a hero because they prevented other people from getting killed by the shooter. However... What does that person have to live with for the rest of their life knowing they took a life? You know, we watch movies. What are you doing, dude? We ain't going nowhere. Um, We uh, watch movies and we hear the stories on the news. And when I read them, I'm like, totally justified. Yep. You know, somebody broke in your house. You were protecting your property, protecting your family. But I don't know at the end of the day if I would be able to live with myself if I took somebody else's life. And you rarely hear anybody talk about the experience of having to shoot somebody else. Yeah, I have a lot of um, police officers in my family. Unfortunately, most of them, the majority of them have never had to use their gun. But my uncle, who was a police officer, had to one day at his home when he was off duty and someone broke in and he was asleep and he did what he had to do to protect himself and his family. And I used to kind of struggle to understand it because he he went through a lot mentally after that. And I I used to feel like, you know, you didn't have a choice. You were protecting Mm -hmm. your family. But I couldn't get it. What he was trying to explain to me is that ultimately it, it doesn't really matter. It didn't matter to him. It was taking someone's life haunted him for like the rest of his life. It did. And he had to, he had to get a lot of therapy is to deal right? with it. Yeah. Even though he was justified, somebody that's that's my fear also. Well, I mean, coming from a military family, I've always like that. That's been a concern of mine because you know when you're in a in an active war zone and there is gunfights and gunfire, and our our military struggle with this. Sure. Tremendously, And they're trained. Yes. And they feel like they're justified. I mean, they're protecting our freedoms. But the truth is, 
where you take somebody's life, yeah. what are the ramifications to that? Now, I'm not getting a whole bunch of people that are calling saying, yeah, I had to shoot somebody I didn't really want to and what it had effect on me, but Caleb's here. Hey, Caleb, good morning. You're on the Burt Show. Hey, good morning, Burt Show. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, um, I just was like, I heard the topic that you guys were talking about, and I wanted to chime in and yep. just say, um, I do think it's really cool to be able, you know, like uh, to own a gun, that is, um, it's good, and it is good to be able to protect yourself. But when someone breaks into your house, I obviously like everyone's going to be acting under pressure because um, that's not something you prepare for. It's kind of, it just happens and you have to, you know, take charge and figure out what you're going to do. But if you shoot somebody, you don't have to shoot to kill. And I just thought like on this note, because you guys were asking, you know, what would happen if you did, you know, if someone breaks in your house and you shoot them, like, what does that do to your soul? How do you feel after and all these things? And obviously like, you know, accidents happen. You can always aim somewhere and not hit where you aim. But, uh, I mean, yeah, it's not like you have to always just, you know, be planning, you know, Oh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna kill this person. Like, no, you can, I always, uh, was taught, you know, shoot, like shoot them in the foot, shoot them somewhere where you're not going to kill them, but they're definitely going to be impaired until like police can get there. And I just, you know, I, I kind of feel like the reality of that, Caleb, is, all right, so let's say I go out and I get this gun this weekend, and let's say I get some training also, right? And then I have somebody break into my house. I'm sure it takes years and years and years of training to be able to calm yourself down in a mm-hmm. situation like that and shoot somebody in a leg rather in the heart. And I, I'm assuming that when somebody breaks into my house, if I have a gun, I am shooting to hit anything or anywhere around him, and I will not have the training enough, like most people that new gun owners, to like just be able to hurt somebody and not kill them. So I think, at least my mentality is, when I get that gun, I have got to be okay with like taking somebody else's life, and I am really struggling that with that, even though I feel like I'm within my rights to protect my family. Uh-huh. It's understandable. I think it's completely understandable because that is. When you when you own something like that, that's what it's, and that's the per that, that's its purpose. It's to, it's to take another life. Was that the reason behind your hesitation all these years? Uh, I think so. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure it is. And I don't just want to go out and get a gun and bring it to my house. I want to get training, so you need mm-hmm. time for that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would like to be able to hit what's coming into my house and nothing else. So I have been reluctant to do that. I mean, when you take somebody else's life, that for me. Even if you're justified, there's just got to be like some, it's really got to hurt your soul. Tommy? I've actually thought the same thing lately, too, about getting a gun. And Mo, Katie, and Romeo better be glad I don't have one because they (laughs) surprised me for my birthday, scared the (laughs) hell out of me. Right. And if I was packing. You just don't know what's going to happen, right? if, If somebody did, seriously, though, break into my house, I don't own a gun right now. But if I did, I'd have no problem. Protecting my house. You say that. You say and that. Uh huh. Hey, Chelsea, good morning. You were on the Burt Show. Hey, guys. Um, I've been listening since I was about seven years old, so I just wanted to say I love you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but I am a 22-year-old woman, and I went uh, to college in downtown Atlanta, and I was put in a position multiple times where I really wish I had a gun. And so I finally bought one. And before, I was avidly against them until I was put into the position where I really wish I had one. Um, and I would just say, if you do plan on getting a gun um, and you are put in that situation, no, you do not have to shoot to kill. But do make sure that you are prepared self-defense-wise so that mm-hmm. that person does not end up using it on you either. So that's really important to remember. Yeah, because um, if you panic and freeze, and then they, they can acquire it from you. Mm-hmm. Uh, one really le- quick, quick, quick call. Ebony, good morning. We only have a couple of seconds here. What do you have? Hey, Bert, good morning. Um, I was just saying, um, I'm a Marine, and we are taught from boot camp to shoot to kill. It is not something that we want to do, but it is what we're trained to do. Mm -hmm. Why do you think when you go to the range, all of your targets are aimed? They're pretty much designed from the torso and up. You aim for center mass. It is unrealistic to try to shoot someone a moving target in the thigh, the leg, the calf, or the foot, per se. It's not realistic. So if you do aim for center mass, more than likely you're going to shoot to kill. Yeah, that's... 
I think that's what you. That's what I was saying. Also, is I think you got to go into that knowing that if you mm-hmm. got that gun in the house, look, I'm not going to be calm enough to shoot in the foot. Thank you for your service. No, no, no problem. It's my pleasure. Thanks, Evan. It's Bert Show. The Bert Show. So, first, thanks for watching. Second, you like what you just watched? That just scratches the surface. Get the Bert Show on any podcast platform. We're so good.